Across the nation have gathered behind us for the first ever simulated convention of states. We're in Colonial Williamsburg. My name is Rick Green. We're here with Mark Meckler. He's the president of Citizens for Self-Governance and also with Ken Clark. He's one of our regional directors for convention of states. Guys, what an exciting day, what we're about to see happen behind us. Yeah, it really is exciting. And for those of you who are online, there's a, there's a lot of time and effort that lead up to this day. Pretty extraordinary three years to, to get us to this point, to get here to Colonial Williamsburg. And this is the real deal. I mean, this is kind of the precursor to the real Super Bowl. It's, it's sort of a dress rehearsal, right? Folks yeah. from, as you said, delegates, commissioners from all 50 states have come here, traveled away from their families across the country to try out that process given to us by the founders in Article 5. Why is that important to have essentially a practice run, to do this in, in a simulated version first? Look, it's never been done before in American history. The founders bequeathed us Article 5. They said to us, if the government ever becomes a tyranny, we're going to give you this gift. You get a chance to get together, get your commissioners together from all over the country and restrain that tyranny. But because it's never been done, we wanted to see it done. We want yeah. it to be tried out so people understand how does it work? What kind of rules are there? What will be an interplay between commissioners? You know, when you're going to do something this important, it's important to practice. Right, right. This is kind of putting the meat on the bones. You know, Ken, you've been working in a regional capacity. How cool is this to now see them from all over the country coming together and it actually happening? You know, it's amazing. And I want to thank the millions of volunteers that we have nationwide yeah. because without them, this would have happened. And so we've got state directors in all 50 states, we've got state level teams, we've got district captains, we've got volunteers that helped put all this together. So this is a culmination of work from just hundreds of thousands of volunteers all over the country. Yeah. And it's because of them that we are here and we were able to do this. And so we really need to acknowledge them. Well, it's a great point. And folks at home that are watching may want to know what they can do as they're watching today. So make sure you check out conventionofstates.com throughout the day to find out how you can get involved. Why Colonial Williamsburg? Mark, why don't you pick here to have the simulated convention? Well, you know, if you, if you read your American history, oftentimes we read about Philadelphia and Independence Hall. We hear about Boston. But the reality is, most of the founders came here at some point to Colonial Williamsburg. It was the original seat of government here in Virginia. Virginia was the biggest and most prosperous colony. So it was just a natural home for the development of the ideas that led to this great American experiment. And so literally the debates that took place in, in some of the public houses, like yeah. we had dinner in last night, places like that, that's where the American Revolution Well, you set from. the bar high. Patrick Henry uh, spoke to him just a few minutes Incredible, ago. Incredible, absolutely. Well, it's time to get started. Well, let's try that again. Commissioners, good morning. Good morning. That is much better. Much better. Welcome back for day two. Uh, thank you for the work that you've done in your committees. I, I've had the opportunity to discuss with a number of you what went well, and, and repeatedly it was to see the process work, to see people come together from so many different places, different ideas, and work in their committees and have proposals come together. It was exciting. Thank you for being back. Let's start our day this morning. We're going to have our secretary uh, call the roll. If you would please uh, announce present as your state is called. Thank you, Mr. President. We'll call the roll in alphabetical order beginning with the state of Alabama. If a quorum of your state delegation is present with the state delegation chairperson, please indicate that the state is present. Alabama. Alaska. Arizona. Arkansas. California. Colorado. Connecticut, Delaware, Florida. Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Present. Illinois. Indiana, are here. <laughs> Iowa, <Present>. Kansas. <laughs> Kentucky, Kentucky is present, but without a form today. Louisiana, present. Maine, present. Maryland. Massachusetts, Present. Michigan, Here. Minnesota, Present. 
Mississippi. Missouri. Montana. Nebraska. Nevada. <laughs> New Hampshire. New Jersey. New Mexico. New York. North Carolina. North Dakota. Ohio. Oklahoma. Oregon. Pennsylvania. Rhode Island. South Carolina. South Dakota. Tennessee. Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, <laughs> West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. Mr. Chair, we have 49 of the 50 states present with a quorum. We have a quorum for the body. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, with that, we will proceed to uh, honor God and country. We have the uh, prayer first from Michael Ferris, and then I will be pleased to lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance. It was a privilege for me as the founder of Patrick Henry College to greet Patrick Henry this morning. And uh, he seemed, seemed uh, uh, fittingly pleased that a college had been named in his honor. Let's pray together. Gracious God, our Father, I thank you so much for the men and women in this room who take the freedom, justice, and what is right so seriously. Um, Lord, I, I pray that you would uh, bless the efforts of today. May it light a fire that uh, fans out throughout the nation. And may uh, people who stand for what is true and what is right and what is good catch the vision for what is possible through this process. Lord God, I pray that you would deliver our nation from those who wish to enslave us. Lord, I ask you that you would indeed preserve the legacy of self-government and liberty under one nation truly under God. Lord, I thank you that you have intervened in our lives in so many ways and give us so many countless blessings. We count it a great blessing that we live in the greatest land of this world. Thank you so much for the opportunity we have to lead and to participate and be good, faithful citizens of this country and of heaven. We pray all this in the powerful and matchless name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioners. You may be seated. You uh, should have on your desks in front of you the minutes from uh, our activity yesterday and uh, also the proposals that came out of the various committees. We'll, uh, if you've had an opportunity to review the minutes, I would entertain a motion on the minutes. Motion from Delaware. Do I have a second on the motion? 
Michigan second. Any discussion to the motion on the minutes? Hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Our minutes are approved. We will next uh, move to our committee reports. We have our committee chairs. May we have them all? Uh, let, let's see. We've got our committee chair first. Let's go to our chairman of the uh, fiscal committee, uh, Senator Lundberg from Colorado for the fiscal committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move the committee report from the Fiscal Restraint Committee, which includes three proposals. Uh, the first one uh, deals with, uh, with the debt limitation and balancing the budget. The second one deals with the uh, um, repeal of the 16th Amendment and, um, and the acknowledgment that the Congress has the power to levy a tax on the sale of goods as the alternative. And the third one deals with a line item veto. And I ask that the report be approved and that these measures be considered later in the course of our business today. Thank you, Commissioner. The motion is to adopt the committee report from the Fiscal Restraint Committee and to set these matters at the appropriate time for debate before this body. Uh, any dis uh, have a second to the motion? I have a second. Any discussion of the motion? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? That motion is approved. Uh, we will next move to the chairman of the Federal Legislative Executive Jurisdiction Committee, Commissioner Rob Standridge from Oklahoma for the committee report. Thank you, Mr. President. First, I'd like to applaud our committee and subcommittee chairman. It was just such a great process and experience yesterday. and I want to applaud every member of our committee. And we have three proposals. I'd like to move that we accept the committee report on these and debate and adopt at the appropriate time. Uh, first proposal by, uh, submitted by a uh, subcommittee by Chairman Caldwell is, uh, is dealing with the commerce uh, portion of our, of our discussion our committee. Unfortunately, the best part, the preamble, was left out, I think, in, in honor of one of our senators here. We, we got rid of all legislative intent in our bills. I think we decided to do so in the in our committee. But anyway, uh, that, that, that report or that proposal is there for your perusal. The second one is um, uh, Commissioner Casper, as chairman of that subcommittee, is, a, is the abrogation, um, which is the reactive part of uh, getting rid of uh, 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 laws, regulations that uh, are owners to states. The third proposal, Chairman Holman, it has to do with the, um, uh, this is the rules, the rules subcommittee drafted this. I'll, I'll leave it to the commissioners to read these, but would submit this uh, committee report for, for adoption and uh, move so and uh, debate at the appropriate time. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. Chairman. The motion is to adopt the committee report and set the proposals for debate at the appropriate time. Any second to the motion? Second from Arizona. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion is approved. Uh, we will next go to the committee report from the Term Limits and Federal Jurisdiction Committee. Uh, Chairman Vance Wilkins, Virginia. Mr. President and members of the commission, uh, we have two resolutions. One is concerning the limitation of terms for Congress, and the other is the overturn of judicial decisions by the states or by the Congress. I move the adoption of the committee report and request that the debate be scheduled at the appropriate time. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Motion is to adopt the committee report from the Term Limits Federal Jurisdiction Committee and to move those proposals at the appropriate time in order today. I may I have a second to the motion? Second from North Carolina. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you, Commissioners. We uh, have a great deal of work to do today. First of all, I want to thank you for your work yesterday. It uh, is a testament to the process that so many people from so many different backgrounds coming together to, to bring proposals in the limited time. We understand that in a simulation, we do have a limited time to discuss and debate these proposals. They are, they are weighty and they are important. Uh, not to take anything from that, we have eight proposals and we do not have eight hours today as we were driving back from James Madison's house on, uh, on Wednesday, there was a car wash that had a sign. It said, be brief, no matter how long it takes. <laughs> I would urge you commissioners today, be brief, 
no matter how long it takes. It's uh, as as we move through these. Um, I, in that in that light, may I please have the committee chairs and vice chairs stand? We have from the uh, uh, fiscal restraint committee, Senator Lundberg from Colorado. We also have uh, Matt Caldwell from Florida as the chairs for that committee. Oh, I'm sorry, Representative Caldwell. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got, I got crossed. Representative Wilson, please. Representative Wilson from from Alaska, and then also from the. Uh, the Federal Jurisdiction Committee, we have um, Representative Standridge, Commissioner Standridge from Oklahoma, Commissioner Caldwell from Florida, and then from the uh, term limits. from the, the uh, Judiciary, the Term Limits Committee, we've got Chairman Vance Wilkins and Vice Chair Alan Hayes from Florida. As you know, in your own committees, there was a great deal of discussion, a great deal of debate, a number of questions that came up and were resolved. I would invite you commissioners to sidebar with these chairs and vice chairs, the members of your delegation from these committees, to the extent possible. We don't want to limit debate in any way, but, but to avoid duplication of, of discussion, if there's any way that you can get your questions resolved to the extent that you have them in sidebar conversations, would you please seek out these chairs and vice chairs of those committees and, and as much as you can in sidebar, let's see if we can, it can deal with those. I would also like to thank these chairs and vice chairs for their work. I know that that was, uh, was a tremendous opportunity and, 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 and a great deal of work in such a limited time. May we please thank these chairs and vice chairs for their efforts yesterday. I'm reminded that as we uh, have the opportunity to move forward, we begin with the, the first proposal. As you uh, press your microphone and stand, you'll be recognized. We have uh, pages, I understand, that will be coming around with your state's uh, name to, to recognize you. We'll try to recognize you in the order that you stand. And uh, you've all, you're all familiar with the, with the rules as we go through uh, in terms of the speaking order, speaking times. We'll please ask you to observe that and uh, observe the car wash rule today to the extent that you can. Uh, we, will, uh, we will begin with proposal number one from the, and just from, from an order standpoint, we're gonna come through the order that we presented these. We will start with the first proposal from the uh, Fiscal Restraint Committee. We will next move to the first proposal from the Federal Legislative Executive Jurisdiction Jurisdiction Committee, we will next go to the first proposal from the Term Limit Committee, and then we'll work backwards. We'll go to the second proposal from the Term Limit Committee and work back through, and uh, hopefully we'll get through all of these proposals today. So starting with the first proposal from the Fiscal Restraint Committee, Senator Lumberg or your designee, would you uh, read through and, and present this, uh, this proposal? The, the, the time is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate that. Uh, the, the first proposal, and uh, in, your, in your notes, uh, our committee actually did assign titles. We spent some time discussing that, but uh, it, it, it really is not a part of the actual proposal to be considered. So this is proposal number one from the Fiscal Restraints, Restraints Committee, essentially dealing with the the uh, limitation on the ability of Congress to increase the public debt. This is uh, much in line with, uh, with, some, with many of the components of uh, balancing the budget, uh, hence it actually in our title description we had wrestled between debt limitation and balanced budget amendment and uh, settled on the debt limitation, but it deals with the area of, as it says, the public debt shall not be increased except upon a recorded vote of two-thirds of each House of Congress and only for a period not to exceed one year. And that's an important point. Section 2, no state or any subdivision thereof shall be compelled or coerced. That's a word that we worked on to ensure that uh, it uh, was uh, clear that Congress uh, nor the uh, President uh, may uh, coerce or compel the states uh, with the appropriation of money. And a third, the provision of this section of this amendment shall take effect three years after ratification. Again, that term, that length of term of when it will take place was uh, uh, another uh, uh, 
item for considerable debate and discussion. We present this to the convention as a whole, and, and I move proposal number one from the Fiscal Restraint Committee. The motion is to adopt proposal number one. Do I hear a second to the motion? Motion is seconded from the Commissioner from Arkansas. Discussion to the motion? Yes, a gentleman from Michigan. Yes, Michigan. Uh, I'm afraid that the more words you give the court, the more uh, options they have to muck things up. I would want to uh, uh, amend it. Instead of compelled or coerced, I would replace those three words with the word required. With that change, I would uh, uh, support the amendment. So if, if I may, uh, Commissioner, in, in Section 2, the, the motion is to the words compelled or coerced, change that to shall be required. That's correct. So that would read, no state or any subdivision thereof shall be required by Congress or the President to appropriate money. I think technically I would have to offer that as a friendly amendment. Shall be required. Um, do I hear a second to the motion to amend? There is a second from Indiana. Indiana. Discussion to the motion to amend. Yes, the gentleman from Virginia. Wisconsin. Gentleman from Virginia. Virginia, excuse me. That's a that's a critical error on my part. <laughs> the ho our, our our host of Virginia. The gentleman's well, there, recognized. There are a couple of Redskins fans in Virginia as well, just so Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, I would encourage that we retain the the language as debated in our committee. We spent a good amount of time talking about this topic. And the, it was the sense of the committee, I believe, in deference to the chairman, that we wanted to make clear to the Congress that we find the debt to be obscene. And we want to make it very, very clear in this second portion of this resolution that we will not be compelled or coerced to appropriate funds that they may press upon us. And while required is certainly a satisfactory word, we believed it was important to make this point very clear. And so I would encourage the body to accept the language that was overwhelmingly supported in the committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I, I would remind you this is being recorded and streamed worldwide. Please, if you will, uh, make a point to speak into your microphones. I recognize the Commissioner from Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Lesko from Arizona, I agree with the previous uh, statement. I agree that we should retain compelled and coerced. I believe it is a more appropriate term and I support the committee on this. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Further discussion to the motion to amend? I'll recognize the gentleman from West Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as, as it relates to this particular uh, amendment, uh, I think the compelled or coerced is the better terminology, but I would also point out, I think there's a number of, well, a few things. First, we have beyond compelled or coerced, we have, um, incentivized. How many people in here right now are wrestling with the question, do we give up our federal education dollars or do we send the boys into the girls' showers? Okay, so this doesn't answer that question for sure, whichever language we use here. The, the second thing that I would point out that is, I believe, a deficiency in this particular section of this is that it says Congress or the President, and yet I know that there are a number of uh, commissioners here who represent states that have had federal judges literally order the state to raise taxes in order to fund that judge's priorities. And so this clearly, and I, I assume that that was done deliberately in committee, excludes the federal judiciary from this question. And I don't believe that would be appropriate. I think the state should be allowed to run the state's business. So uh, I, I'm in opposition to this particular amendment, but I think this entire section needs considerable more work. Thank you for the discussion. The motion, gentleman from New Hampshire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, would you? Is your microphone on? 
I don't think we're picking you up. Lights on, nobody's home, unfortunately. <laughs> there we go, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Daniels from New Hampshire. I rise in opposition to the motion of, of replacing the, the wording. Uh, we, we talked a lot about the word coerce and think in terms of that the federal government uh, does not require you to spend money on EPA uh, mandates. Uh, however, they will withhold uh, funds that could go to your state or penalize you if you don't do it. So while there is a requirement, there is no requirement that the state do that, uh, the word coerce takes care of that, uh, that instance. So I would encourage you to vote against the amendment and keep the wording as, as it is. Thank you, Commissioner. I would also remind the body again, we have eight items and we don't have eight hours. And so please, uh, if we can avoid duplication, if someone has, has stated your point, uh, we, can, we can move through and, and move through the items. I don't want to cut off debate in any way, but we do have a lot of work to do. Recognize the gentleman from Texas. Move to table the amendment. The motion is to table the amendment. Did I? Second. There's a motion to table the amendment, and we have a second. Uh, there's no discussion to that motion, as I understand, correct? So the, I uh, place the motion. The motion is to table this proposal. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. No. I'm going to call for a roll call vote, Mr. Secretary. The motion is to table the, in, the proposal. Is it to table, excuse me, gentleman from Texas, is it to table the motion to amend to table proposal one? To table the motion to amend. To table yeah, the I, yeah I, think that's, I think that's not in order. I think you can call the question. I can move to table the amendment. Yeah, I don't believe it's in order to table the amendment. I think, I think you, can, you can call the question on the amendment or table the entire proposal. Call, call the question on the amendment. His point of order is recognized. The gentleman from? Tennessee. Tennessee. A motion to table is proper on an amendment. Is that our, our I'll, I'll defer to our parliamentarian. I don't think that's the case, but I will. I, again, as we're waiting, I would, I would encourage you to the extent possible to sidebar with the chairs and the members of those committees in, in the discussions, to the extent possible. Again, not to limit debate in any way, but to the extent that you have questions and that we gained a lot of experience in the, in the debate and in the discussion in that process of, of, of developing and sifting and molding the language. I would encourage you to take uh, the opportunity to do that. I think in the interest of time, what's that? So we have a, our parliamentarian instructs us that a motion to table under Mason's rules is not applied to a motion to amend. A uh, gentleman from Texas, would you, is, is that a motion to call the question then? Motion to call the question. Motion is to call the question. There's a second. So the, the motion to amend striking the words compel or coerce, replacing them with required is before the body. Uh, voting yay is to amend, voting nay is to strike down the motion to amend. All in favor of the motion to amend proposal one, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Nay. I will rule that the motion fails. Further discussion to the motion to adopt proposal one. You have proven that the people are ready to hold the first Article 5 convention in the history of this country. I congratulate you, I salute you, may God bless you. Thank you for being here and let's get to work.